Please be seated. Folks, it's about uh, 25 of 12. We're going to be calling this next witness to try and complete his testimony prior to lunch. If we're a few minutes late, we'll, we'll break right after this witness. Call your next witness. Info Rafael Valdivar. Sir, if you come forward, please. <coughs> So you might just need to lean into that microphone a little bit. There, that's probably a good distance right there. Would you introduce yourself to the jury and spell your first name and your last name, please? Yes, my name is Raphael Zaldivar, R-A-F-A-E-L, last name Z Z Zaldivar, Z-A-L-D-I-V-A-R, and I am the father of Alex. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you to slow down just a little bit. I, I watch the panic on the court reporter's face as you, okay. you talk fast. Sorry. Apologize. Right. Please proceed. Good morning. Yes, we did. It was just a, a slight presentation uh, commemorating more or less his, his life. That is correct. Okay. Other than private prior rulings, any objection? All right, you go, and go ahead and publish it. Mm -hmm. now, uh, Mr. Uh, because of some technical requirements, mm -hmm. we will not be able to talk during presentation. Correct. We can talk after. Okay. Folks, as you know, electronics is not my thing, uh, but I'm, I'm going to have to turn some white noise on while we're playing this. It won't affect your ability to see it. There's nothing to hear on it.
You may. Please proceed. <sighs> Mr. Saldivar, I, I believe you brought another photo with you that you had uh, asked to show. So if you would like to. Yes, this is a, I know you've seen some of his previous photos. Those are his after photos, the ones you, that were presented to you in court. But I want to show you a past photo. And this was on his birthday, uh, uh, his last birthday. And this is what he looked like at the time. And how, when was that photograph taken? It was taken on three years ago on August 26th. August 26th, so very close in time to yes. his death. He's, he lived, he was alive for 15 more days okay. after this photograph was taken. And this, is this one of the photographs that we see at the funeral that was, uh, I noticed we, we, it seemed to be similar photographs. Yes, it is. It is the same. We have two. Okay. Thank you. Well, so <clears throat> I want to ask you a couple of questions just about some of the photos we saw there. Um, I know there was a photo of Alex as a child with an older couple. Can you tell me who those people were? Those are Alex's grand grandparents. His grandmother passed away recently, but his grandfather is still alive today. He's 92 years old. And that's your your parents? That is my father. Okay. Um, I noticed in a couple of the photographs, he appeared to be holding um, some uh, what I would call origami figures. Is that something that he did as a kid? <laughs> yes, that was uh, his mother, teacher, how to make origamis. I noticed in another photo there was it, 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 it almost looked like he and two or three other friends and, and they're drinking what, what looks like champagne but hopefully <laughs> not. Can you tell me what that photo yes, is? Yes, that was uh, I believe his eighth eighth birthday and uh, 
you know, he always wanted to ride in a limousine like a movie star. He had a lot of ambition, and um, you know, he would serve champagne. Of course, it wasn't; it was cider or something like that. And then, but that's actually in, in a limousine. Yes, it was. But Where'd they go? Where'd they go? I have no idea. They took him <laughs> somewhere, but okay. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't a club or anything like that. Okay. Mm. And and if you know, could you please give us the the backstory of the one where he's sitting in in the basketball hoop? That is classic Alex. Alex is, um, as you know, he was very tall. He was six foot one and growing. He was, a, he was a very bright and smart kid. But he, I have no idea how, how he got up there. But that was him. And one of his friends took that photograph. It was the sunset. And he got up on the rim. And he climbed up. And he took the, he took the snap, snapshot. And he sent me that picture. One of his best friends. If you could share for us a couple of your fondest memories of of Alex. Honestly, if I had to tell Alex's life story, I would have to sequester you for 6,945 days and nights. It would take me that long. That's 19 years of his life. Uh, Alex is, I cannot explain his life anymore because they already read that to you. And those are our true sentiments about Alex. Alex was our he was my best friend, like his older brother. He was truthful. He was honest. He had an incredible heart. His friends would always go to him. Whenever they had a problem, they would always go to Alex. He was a beautiful child. It's, uh, it's devastating not seeing him anymore. And, and the photos where there's, where there's both your sons, Alex is the younger of the two. Correct. Some of those photos were in Hawaii because he, when we traveled back from from Tokyo to the United States, we you know try to make a stop there and uh, wanted to teach him them a little bit about history and Pearl Harbor and what that meant to the United States, so they would learn and I would teach them things like that. Now, why would the family move from the states to to, uh, to Japan? Were you in the military or what was the? No, I was in a corporate. I was uh, at the time I was. Uh, with Tokyo Disneyland, Walt Disney World, Tokyo Hong Kong, Tokyo France, and uh, I was a corporate executive with a private company. And that allowed me to travel and show them different places and, you know, of course, spend time in their home country, which that's what I wanted them to do. How, how many different uh, countries did, they, did he grow up in, the U.S. and Japan or other places? Yeah, that? Japan, um, mostly Japan and the United States. Of course, you know, I wanted to take him to Cuba later on, but that never happened. But, uh, you know, they got to visit a lot of places like Guam, Guam uh, I mean, just, just everywhere. And they really love to travel, and travel was their thing. International is what they like to do. How much older was Alex's brother, is Alex's brother? Uh, two years, eight months older than Alex. And, and were they close? Extremely close. They were best friends. They loved each other dearly. It was, it was very difficult for him. He's not here today. He was here yesterday. It is just, it's just too hard on him. It's too hard. What effect have you seen on him because of Alex's death? <sighs> Raph Jr., he's, he's withdrawn. He's withdrawn. I know I feel it in his heart. He's not the same. <sighs> he lost a whole year of college. He just couldn't continue the schooling. And it just he just got back. He's you know, he's got a little bit of catching up to do, so hopefully he will be he's attending UCF shortly. But he lost a whole year because of this. And it's been devastating on him. Devastating. I will never forget the morning. How about you? How how has this affected you? It's um I have a broken heart. You know, they say when a mother and father, when a child suffers, a mother and father suffer even greater, especially the mother. She is heartbroken. And um, I don't know what to do about it. You know, there's an emptiness in my heart. I love my son more than I feel my life itself. I would die for him, you know. I would kill for him. I would do anything for him. Is there any any part of Alex that we haven't let this Jerry know about that you'd like to share with them? I know we've heard a lot of wonderful things, but is there anything else you'd like to share with these jurors about Alex? 
I appreciate you all being here and, and taking the time for the last couple of weeks is not easy. As Judge Kess has explained to you how important it is to be here, to hear these testimonies. But now you know my son. I don't want you to remember my son from the pictures that you saw. Those are very graphic photographs. Please don't think of those anymore, which will be very difficult because if, if you would, yeah. just just limit yourself. Just to, to, is there anything else you want the jury to know about Alex? Just remember what you saw. This picture, the picture that I showed you here. That's all. I need Thank a you. legal basis. I'm done. Mr. Zalvo, just yeah. give us a second. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. Right. Do you have any cross examination? <clears throat> Sir, you may step down. Thank you. Either that or we can do that right after lunch if you want. Take them. Okay. okay. He wants to take them. Yeah. Okay. Let's just wait till after lunch. Folks, we're going to go ahead and excuse you for lunch. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to give you until 1 30. Uh, I'm going to remind you once again, and I have done this a lot, it becomes more important each time. Uh, do not discuss this case amongst yourselves. Do not discuss it with anybody else. Do not do any research on any matters in any form or any style. Uh, if anybody approaches you in the courthouse or if you're out at lunch, uh, please tell them uh, that you're on a jury. You cannot talk with them about this case as they continue to approach you or talk to you about it. Let your deputies know. Again, do not communicate with anybody about this case or accept any communication from anybody, neighbors, friends, family, spouses, anybody. In addition, I need you to keep an open mind. You still have heard we heard the state uh, present their case. They may have additional evidence, the defense has an opportunity. I need you to keep an open mind. It's critical in this particular matter. We will start up again at 1.30. We can go forward. We should uh, not have a time problem at all today. And I'll give you a little idea of what, what the time plans are for everything in that case. All right? Thank you all very much. So Roger, thank you. We'll be in recess until 1.30. If you would show Mr. Anakiu what the two or three items are. Okay, thank you. We'll start up again at 1.30. Thank you all.